playing game one with the white pieces against Yana Pamshi. He goes for knight f3. Against a fresh Yana Pamshi. A very fresh Yana Pamshi. And, and uh, Yana Pamshi, who has not lost the match to this point. That's right. And the Yana Pamishi, who won the candidate tournament and is supremely confident. So Dimitri, he's got the white pieces in game one here. He repeats the same opening from game two against Ikaro. He has to keep his foot on the gas pedal. He can't give the white game away because Jan has been completely unstoppable with the white pieces. And Jan's preparation has been spectacular. And that's an understatement. The way that Jan beat Hikaru Nakamura in that bounce back in game two with that deep Catalan preparation with the exchange sacrifice for a couple of pawns, that was something. And right now, Dimitri is doing the most Dimitri thing ever. Right, He's just yeah. saying, let's play in a position that I feel comfortable in, not tactical at all. Let me outplay you in just but this could... casual game. But it could get tactical because White's typical idea in such positions is to play B2, B4. If he and get the bishop on B2, and White's pieces come into the center very, very quickly. So what you will sometimes see is once the knight moves away from C3, if White can get the bishop to B2 in a timely fashion, threats could be made against Black's king. That's, that is true, for sure. And what I'm noticing, in addition to the plans you mentioned, is that Yana Pamshi, he's spending quite a deal of time at this point. He mm -hmm. doesn't want to choose the wrong plan because in this position, does this plan bring the knight to d7 as he just played or knight to c6? Those are important questions that you can't answer later. You need to figure it out right now. And of course, this all leads into the big question of uh, how to develop the light squared bishop. My guess is that Jan will play b6 and bishop b7. He wants to do the same thing Dimitri wants to do. So we might see both sides developing their minor pieces in a very, very similar manner. And later on down the line, Jan could try to stick a rook on c8 and really challenge all of Dimitri's pieces on the c-file. And as you're pointing out, the bishop is going to be fianchettoed. Sometimes you play a6, b5. Other times you just settle for b6. These little, it's bad, it's bad. Yeah, these little things, they're really consequential. Now, yeah, such as where you develop your pieces. Eh. It doesn't really matter. Not against <laughs> someone like Dimitri and Drake. He's not going to punish you for wrong development. No, no, no. He doesn't care. He's just uh, happy to be here. And right. he gets minimum $20,000. Second place in this event, 20 k And it's very deserved for whoever ends up in second. But right now, Jan Napomashi with the black pieces, he also just has the benefit of you know, he can lose a first match. He'll get that rematch. Dimitri and Drake does not have that same right. Right. But there will be huge momentum on Dimitri's side if he can win the first match. So Jan, from his perspective, he wants to end it right here and right now. He definitely does. And I think that Dimitri has many new fans. I don't think after this, we're going to have to say, oh, people overlook Dimitri. No, nah, he's getting Not anymore. the credit and the respect that he deserves. But right now, his position, he plays E4, which is a big move because with the queen on C2, you were indicating this before, Daniel. Look at the H7 pawn. Maybe there's an E5, a knight G5, and white's pieces spring to life. Dima is going after him, and that explains Jan's move queen c7 preventing e5 and of course aiming at the h2 pawn but this is more of a defensive move than an aggressive move it also poses the potential threat of bishop takes f2 check that's right so knight b5 kind of takes care of multiple issues at once you attack the black queen and it's not just to attack the queen it stops your bishop f2 check because the queen now protects the bishop on c4 and then i'm going to follow up with pawn to b4 bishop to b2 and i feel like white is gaining important space from an aesthetic visual visual perspective, I agree completely. I think White's position looks more pleasant. What could be the other candidate move here other than knight b5? Do you see um, anything that catches your eye? No. No. <laughs> neither, neither does Dimitri. Yeah, no, I was I wanted to play b4 and I couldn't do that without dropping f2 in a moment ago. So now b4 is a very nice move. Yeah, I cannot imagine Andrake playing anything else. E5 clearly doesn't work. Uh, one important detail, e5, knight takes e5, bishop f4, never works in such positions because knight takes f3 is always check. That's good to point out. So what is Dimitri thinking about? Because isn't the whole purpose of this opening to play the move b4? Why they hired the commentators that they did for this tournament? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a reasonable thought. <laughs> well, maybe he's thinking about rook... No, but rook d1 weakens the f2 pawn and it doesn't really pose any obvious threats. And, and then black will happily play a6, ah. bishop b7, and so on. 
No, I was thinking maybe he wants some bishop g5, bishop h4, bishop g3, <laughs> but that's way too slow. And he just burned like a solid 90 seconds on these last two moves. Yeah, it, it's very strange because, you know, you play knight b5, b4 was the follow-up, and he could have made, the, not knight b5, but he could have played b4 instantly, and instead he is giving himself a two-minute hole. Two and a half minute hole at this point. Right. And I would argue that Bishop B2 is another very natural move that I would be playing pretty quickly. Maybe he's going to go for your Bishop G5, Bishop H4, Bishop Maybe. G3 maneuver. And it, that's been made more appealing, right, by the fact that there is a black Bishop on E7, because at some point later down the line, E5 could become a semi dangerous idea as well. That's right. So I'm a little concerned about. Dimitri's clock management thus far. And I wonder if fatigue could be setting in because it, even though it's been what two hours of chess, just the stress of playing Wesley. So in a car Nakamura, I mean, that adds up. And so Dimitri, you know, he's a great player. He's played uh, blitz matches for hours and hours and hours, but you have to recognize he's human after all. He definitely is. And right now he's facing an unbelievably confident Jan, who is once again playing with unbelievable confidence. He's only spent a minute. And do you get the feeling that Jan's pieces just breathe? They just, they just flow. It's like watching Steph Curry when he's on. Every piece <laughs> is, of course, I had to nerd out with a basketball analogy. It's all good. But you know. you know what I mean? Every piece is on a perfect square. There's just a certain oomph to his play that makes it so fun to watch. And I think we both agree it's not just this game. It's just the new Jan Nepomchi yeah. over the last few years. And it's weird to say that somebody who's number three in the world by rating and <laughs> he might be underrated, but I think the way he's been playing, the maturity he shows, and just the uh, cohesiveness of his plans Great and of his word. clock management, I think that, yeah, he is really just a menace on the chessboard right now. And Dimitri Andrikin, he just brought Bishop back to D3. I think he's telegraphing what his intentions are, E5. But Black could just play Rook C8 and does just that. Are you really going to play Queen B1? No, so Queen E2. So I don't know. I don't feel like Dimitri is as harmonious of a plan right now. Well, I remember my coach teaching me that E4 in such positions tends to be an incredibly risky move because you weaken the entire complex of dark squares around the center. And you also limit the prospects for your bid. There we go. Case in point. Knight h5, aiming for f4. But what is Jan's follow-up going to be here? He's induced g3, but uh, was that a little bit of the old Jan there, Robert? Yeah, we were just talking about how harmonious and cohesive his pieces were. That move is a knight on the rim that isn't looking very good. And I think that white can play e5 soon, which might strand that knight on h5 and you have to be very careful that you're not walking into a vicious attack i know e5 does not look promising just based on the fact there's a bishop on b7 slicing across the position but when a knight is trapped on h5 it can be worth going for i think that's a prudent decision by jan to go back but he has just invested two tempi in inducing a move that arguably isn't even harmful i'm not sure the g3 creates any further appreciable weaknesses in white's position this gives Dimitri a golden tempo that he can use to bring a rook into the game. Rook AD1, rook FE1. And in the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty big deal. And I know today's not Thursday, but I hope that Dimitri's enjoying himself a little throwback because if we just go back two games or two matches ago, I say against Wesley. So remember what Wesley did. He went knight right. C5, knight A4, and Jan just went knight h5, knight f6, and it gave Dimitri the time he needs to launch an attack. I mean, knight g5, pawn e5, these kind of ideas might really be harmful for Black's king. I like that move, though. a7, a5, chipping, nibbling away at the edges, trying to carve out the c5 square for his knight. And I think that Jan's primary strategy should be to launch a direct attack against this e4 pawn, if that is possible. This poses Dimitri with a difficult challenge. How is he going to defend the b4 pawn? Is he going to defend it at all? I feel like there are some Moran lines like this, so bear with me for a second. Knight g5. Okay. If you play h6, can I play knight takes f7? Woo! You know, like these type of sacrifices where you yeah, then play yeah, e5. Like e5. And is and it equal? Does it say zeros? It does of course. <laughs> of course. According to our the theory that we developed <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> 
Dutch positions are always the same valuation. Yeah, like it's super unclear. The king is not safe, but it's just zeros. And there's even this move, Bishop H7, oh, I, to I, stop I, the king I, from escaping. I won't pretend like I saw Bishop H7 as a concept. Knight G, okay, this is what's happening. Oh my God, you called it. You called it. Knight G5 is on the board. I can't believe it. But you know yeah, exactly what, about, what I'm talking about, right? Those Moran lines and like the Botvinnik yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Vesel and Topalov also. Yeah, exactly. That's who I was thinking about, Topalov. Topalov against Kramnik had a very famous game where he just sacked on F7 ran, seemingly at random in the opening and didn't even seem to have a clear follow-up. And yet the permanent weakness of the king is often the sole motivation for these types of sacrifices. And they're unbelievably difficult to face practically. I love the move, Knight G5. Can black respond with knight e5? Do you have to play h6? Are you... I, I guess knight e5, but I'm wondering if I can just, like, bishop back and f4, and maybe you're inviting too many of my pieces into the attack. That would be my main concern. Mm. Yeah, that's Actually, a poor idea. Knight e5, maybe just bishop e5 and followed by f4. Oh, and then quickly you just steamroll me with e5. <laughs> yeah. You don't, need, you don't even need your dark squared bishop, which is crazy, but true. Yeah, that's why at first I was like, oh, I'll move my light square bishop back. But no, I can, as we're showing, we can just take and push pawns forward and win the game. So Jan Napomshi, the fact that he builds up a big lead on the clock is huge for him. But here it comes. H6 played, knight takes f7. Maybe you don't have to take on f7, but that's where my eyes are glued. Well, the other move is the immediate uh, e4, e5 counterattack in the knight, which leads to... Complete and utter chaos. The black queen could get trapped in that line, by the way. If you oh. play e5 here, hgef looks totally innocuous. Knight takes f6. What's the big deal? The big deal is that the queen is trapped on b8 in this line. And if you play bishop takes f6, well, that's a much inferior version. There's knight d6. There's all sorts of shenanigans here that white has. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, just a position that's starting to look very difficult for black. But what I don't like for Dimitri Andrekin is that he's down to three minutes. Jan has time to work through the complications. Dimitri, he's going to have to trust his intuition a little bit more, but he's not doing that, right? He's he's deliberating, which is great. As a chess commentator, as a coach, we say, right. clap, clap our hands. You know, you should be calculating, but now you have two minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, and navigating the Byzantine complexities of that position is going to be an incredibly tall order, even with six minutes. And there it is, the sack on F7. You called it straight oh, away. Did you see Jan? I don't think he fully expected this. He has the not impressed face on. <laughs> yeah. He just took a sip of his tea. I don't think he's too unhappy to see this. He knows this is going to give him winning chances. He knows that if this backfires, this will probably lose. And he knows that Dima is in time pressure. So if he chaos. plays Bishop H7 oh. here, Danya, I would just like quit. And he didn't right. do it. That you would know, be just... nuts. The most so, inhuman move ever, Bishop H7. Does Black take the opportunity then to escape to G8? No, Jan simply takes on before as if nothing is the matter, as if F5 is not coming on this on the next move. That's uh -oh. why he's Bishop C5 check! Bishop C5 oh! check! Oh! Oh no! I think that's a crusher. Yeah, it is, and Jan finds it pretty much immediately. Oh, uh, Dimitri completely forgot about that. He can't move his king because the other bishop kills the king there with knight F4 check. Oh, and then this is just over then. If your best move is bishop d4, knight c3 now. Take oh. advantage of a pin piece. Oh, f takes c6, you just drop the king back to g8. That was my plan. And you say, my king is as safe as it gets. What about yours? And Whoa, Jan but Yanni rushed it. Wait, so f takes c6? f takes you double check. King and g8 if, and e takes d7. Wait, what is, actually, what did he just do here? And when everything is said and done, Robert, when you take th three times on d4, white plays rook f2, and guess what? The threat of bishop h7 check is going to get white right back into the game. And you asked about the yawn of old. This is, is one of those of examples. Old. He has so much time remaining. Five, Five minutes. minutes. Take a minute, because if you find one move, the game is over on Drake and Resigns. You win the RCC, basically. Yes, and now all of a sudden, black could be lost in just a few moves, right? We see the eval bar saying it's not much of anything, but for e takes d7 here, now Jan has a lot to figure out. Unbelievable. And Jan, I apologize for the, for the ambulance. That's coming after Jan's queen. <laughs> Bishop h7 um, or the rook. Wait, so you have to give up the... King h8? What? What do you do? 
Oh, you have knight c3 here. And that, if we pull up an analysis board, leads to, I believe, a bailout. dc, rook c8, bishop h7 check. This is actually less complicated than it appears. King takes h7. Da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. And black should not lose this, right? Yeah, e even if black lost both those queenside pawns, I'm still not sure black loses this. So, yeah, this is uh, a hold. And what a save this is going to be behind Draken. It seemed like the game was over after bishop c5 check. And it perhaps should have been. Unreal. Will Jan find knight c3? It seems to be the only move. You know, you know, when annotations are made and there's exclamation point question mark, that's wow. how this game went. To meet you with an exclamation point of knight g5 takes f7, and then a big question mark of f4 to f5. So it's like uh, some brilliance, some shaky moves, but right now Jan, he's spending time, but he probably wishes he spent this time several moves back. Well, queen takes e5. You get the temptation of that move. It has a certain, it has a certain aura to it. It looks like it's the winning move, but he just didn't calculate it. He took five seconds in that position, a very uncharacteristic, and I mean to use that specific word, a very uncharacteristic mental lapse for the new Yan. And I get why he made this. He just took a piece on d4 with check. And he's up a minor piece. You think, oh, I calculate here. But then you see rook f2. My rook on c8 under attack. My queen is about to be lost. So Jan, uh, he's not going to be happy with this one. But the good news for him is he did just play knight c3. I don't think he's losing this position. And if no. that's the case, he gets game two with the white pieces. Yeah, he, he should and I'm sure will focus on the positives. Yes, this was a topsy-turvy game. But he also could have lost it. He can console himself by saying that if Dimitri had found the right move after king takes f7, black's king is caught in the crossfire there. So when all is told, a successful result for Jan, assuming this game will indeed fizzle out. And I'm trying to see if there's any way Dimitri can, like, queen e6. Oh, he played as Whoa. soon as I was going to say. Wait a like, second. Is there some kind of move but here? But isn't there a mate? Or am I crazy? Oh, the rook is pinned. Oh, my God. <laughs> the rook is pinned. Otherwise, there'd be mate. Yeah, you would take twice on c8, and, and then you go rook f8. f8. Incredible. And then those darn chess.com bugs not letting you play rook f8. It was I a problem know, with full the... of glitches. Ugh. So What does Dimitri do here? Is there queen g6? Then bishop e4. Oh, boy. Then I probably just get myself a losing position, don't I? Wait, what is the... It's zeros according to the bar. It's zeros according to the bar. But I think you need something cold blooded like queen f5. And then and if Okay, you took your first. Oh, because now you can't play you, can... you can't play bishop e4 because right, but you can play knight e4. Oh my goodness. Yeah, knight e4, and then try that on for size with a minute on the clock. But I think that's the solution here. The knight e after queen f5, knight e4 cuts off circulation, the battery between the bishop and the queen, and it pin puts pressure on the pinned rook. And if you take the 94, you lose your rook on d1 with check. Right. And then after 94, white should probably just calmly play a takes b4 and sign the peace accords after the mass trade on f2. What a ridiculously calm move to play. a takes b4 here. Right. Just nothing's the matter. We're fine. Everything's defended. Let's just take some pawns. And it just makes perfect sense because bishop takes e4 is clearly not good after queen takes d1 check. So a There's takes no d4. other moves. <laughs> I mean, whether you and like it or not, process of elimination. Did you see Dimitri there? He's like, I cannot believe that all this just happened and that we're here and we're just going to be an equal enemy. Yeah, he's running through the very familiar gamut of emotions. And he's being, yeah, we been doing a lot of head shaking. Listen, we've all been there, having beaten Hikaru and Wesley <laughs> in the same tournament and now saving a game against Jan. We all know what that's like. <laughs> and Dimitri has made it to the finals of the World Cup. And for those of you who follow chess, you know that that is a ridiculously impressive accomplishment because you have to win matches against Grandmaster after Grandmaster after Super Grandmaster. So it just, you know, he, he has experience in match format. Uh, but yeah, right now you can tell that he's been through a lot in these last few games. Jan spending his remaining time trying to find ways to spice this position up, but he's run out of fuel. 
Like, he just doesn't have enough pieces to cause actual problems to Black's King, uh, to White's King. Knight takes F2, gets checkmated on H7. That's actually critical. And uh, we're on to Cincinnati. Rookie 8, actually. Jan is still trying. Oh, right. But these end games, like, let's say you move your bishop to C2 and we trade everything on F2. Only White can be better there. Yeah. I don't know why Jan is pressing oh. his luck like this. <laughs> Queen F7. Okay, just putting immediate pressure on this rook on you. I mean, Dimitri just trying to force Jan to play queen takes F2. He's like, enough of this nonsense. Just take my rook already. But I actually mean it. The white is better in the ensuing endgame. <laughs> no, we, we, we saw Andre can do this to Fedoseev. No, 100%. And the problem yeah. is black has a king that's not particularly safe. Exactly, because the bishop controls the Luft square. And in a time scramble, Jan now down to a minute on the clock. We know that anything can happen. We know of Andraken's endgame wizardry. Bishop b7 and c6. Jan somehow keeps the tension still. So bishop c2 is a move I really like here. Uh, yes. we, can't, we can't take on e4. The rook on d1 is loose. But after bishop c2, I think at long last, the trade on f2 is mandatory. And when that happens, rook d6 is a threat. I, I really Dude, think that Andraken press. Queen e3, could you still do that? Oh my gosh. Queen I think it, it very much consistent with Jan's style to play queen e3. And he's thinking here, which means that it's very likely he makes it like queen e3. But the longer he thinks, the greater the possibility that he just says, hey, I don't want to lose this game either. But no, after queen takes f2, it's like the worst version of that endgame because now the rook is heading to d6. Right. Has and Jan dug himself into a hole? There's queen e3. What a move. I have a queen f4. Oh, you can take on that too with the knight. Oh my god, a knight to h3, and the rook blocks the check on d8. Yeah, that's Holy actually... Smokes. 10 seconds for Dimitri! You gotta go. He has four bars of connection, so I'm looking at that. No, same. Five Dimitri, seconds. Dimitri, what are you doing? Three seconds. Dimitri! One second! Oh my gosh, he was b5. So wait, if you just trade everything on f2 now? And take b5. And there's rookie two check at the end, so I think black... Could potentially go up oh upon here. Oh my gosh. And Jan will go up upon, but Dimitri, rook d2, and he should be able to hold this. The bishop g6, rook nice b8. Nice move. But just get my rook behind that pass pawn. And five seconds for the rest of the game. Dimitri has his work cut out for him. Bishop b8, great move by Jan. This is dangerous territory for Dimitri Andreykin. Extremely. Rook d8 is going to come if you play king d2. So now, oh time, my gosh. time to start bringing that king in for black, right? At some point, you can't win the game without it. Oh, he pushes. Bishop f7, does he want? Oh, there's rook d8, take d3! <laughs> oh, he missed the tactic. Does he have it again? No, because the bishop can't get to the other diagonal. Ooh. But if rook b1, he has rook d8, takes Make d3. Make a move! <sighs> 0.9 seconds on that move. Make gotta a go, move! Gotta go. gotta flag! Oh it's my zero, gosh. Zero, zero. <sighs> if he saves this game, Jan is going to be furious no, with but, himself. But there's no way now the pawn is landing on b3. Just bring the king. This is completely winning. How did Jan do that? Dimitri got himself into too much time wait, trouble. Wait, 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 wait. Do Bishop C? Oh. Rook F2. Okay, Rook F3. I feel like there's. Dimitri, Dimitri move. This game. Move, Dimitri. One second. Move. Flag. Oh my gosh. Wait, can Jan play? Bishop yeah, F3. Rook G3. Bishop F5. Make move, a move. 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 He's going to flag. He flagged. No, he didn't. What? He had zeros for like five minutes. <laughs> he, and now he, he flags. Yeah. His position was completely lost. So normally I would feel bad when somebody uh, loses on time like that. But no, nah, he was Okay, this was bad. just to show this was the moment on move 42 when Jan could have gone rook d8 and then rook takes d3 and bishop g6. That would have ended the game faster. What an unbelievable effort by Jan to produce those winning chances. Was that incredible or what? It was an absurd game because at first Jesus. we thought that Dimitri would have the attack, but then he erred with his F4, F5. It was completely winning for Jan somewhere uh, in there. It was complicated, but tactically speaking, he had the upper hand and then he rushed his decision. So Jan Napomshi, I think maybe in part, because he knows he can lose the first match and still get a second match. He's like a little too calm as he pours his tea off to the side, off screen here. Uh, but yeah, that was a uh, topsy.